Hello, uh, in this video we're going to talk about distances and angles in 3D. Uh, actually, we're going to <laughs> compute one distance and one angle, uh, but however, our techniques apply uh, very generally. So uh, let's go. Uh, the idea is if you have two points in uh, 3D, say uh, these points, and they are nicely described by um, coordinates, then uh, computing the distance between these uh, points is really uh, quite straightforward. Uh, the trick is really to first look at the vector going from one to the other. So let's say we, we look at the vector here from, from A to B, and then the idea is just to compute the length of this vector. But as a first step, and this works in general, if you want to compute the distance between two points, A and B, just first create the vector from A to B. So that would be here the vector A, uh, A, B. There you go. Now, how to do this uh, is always uh, the right way to go to uh, then take the difference between the vector B and the vector A. You know, uh, the capitals refer to the points and the, the small letters in B and A refer to the vector towards A or the vector towards B. So uh, generally, uh, this is always true. Now let's plug in what we have there. So we have to compute uh, for these coordinates and then minus the coordinates there, 5, minus 6, and uh, 4. And if you want to compute such a difference, you do it for each coordinate. So I get minus 5, minus 5, I get 5, minus, minus 6, and I get 1, minus 4. Okay, so far so good. Let's continue minus 10, 11, and minus 3. So basically what this vector does is, well, it goes in the x direction, it goes minus 10, it goes from 5 to minus 5, that makes sense. In the y direction, it goes from minus 6 to plus 5, so it goes plus 11. And in the z direction, it goes from 4 to 1, so that's minus 3. So that's another way to do this computation without all this, just look per coordinate what happens. Uh, and now is the point, the distance between A and B is actually the length of this vector. Now, how do you compute the length of a vector? Suppose I have a vector uh, x, y, uh, z in general, and I want to compute the length. Now, the length is denoted by those vertical uh, lines around it, just like absolute value sign, except in this case it's not an absolute value. It's the length. How do you compute it? It's just the generalization of Pythagorean theorem. It's the square root of the squares of all those numbers, of all those coordinates. There you go. My square root vanished a little bit, but now it may be better visible. So uh, let's apply that here. If we want to compute the length of vector AB, and with that, the distance between the points A and B, we just take this vector and uh, its coordinates and apply this formula. I get minus 10 squared. I get 11 squared and I get 3 squared, so that's uh, the square root of 100 plus 121 plus 9. It just fits underneath, so it's the square root of 230. That's the distance between those two points. So far, the first half of the video. Now, the second uh, half, uh, there's a promise of talking about angles. Well, here we go. So there's an angle between these two vectors, A and B. I call it theta, and I'm just going to throw the main important, super important formula at you, namely that the cosine of theta equals the inner product of these two vectors divided by the length of these two vectors. So if you uh, notice, this dot here is not an inner product, it's just a product of two numbers, because the length is simply a number. But this is really an inner product or dot product. Dot or inner product. Now, the inner product is uh, a funny product, because you multiply two things, and what out comes out is not a similar sort of thing, but it's actually a number. So let me remind you, or even introduce you, to what the inner product or dot product is. If I have two vectors like that, let's take general, um, 
general coordinates now. So let's say A is some sort of vector um, AX. Uh, now let's do it the other way around. Let's write XA. That, that makes more sense. Otherwise, we get lots of A. So it's X of A. That's very small, but it's an A. The Y of A, and that's uh, Z or Z, I never know, of not of B, of A. There you go. And let's say B has coordinates, you can guess, X, uh, B, uh, Y, B, and Z, B. And now, finally, I can introduce what is the inner product in general. It's just defined by multiplying all these coordinates pairwise and then adding them up. So I do X of A times Y of A. Hello, x of a times x of b plus y of a times y of b plus z of a times z of b. Yeah, that's correct. So what comes out is a number, right? This is simply a number. And uh, yeah, it's sort of magical. Why, why don't we just... Uh, you know, take the vector with commas here, and that's the product. But it turns out that this inner product is very useful, and the reason is this formula. It's so useful even that some people take this formula as the definition, and then this is sort of the outcome. But I find that, yeah, for computational reasons, it really makes sense to take this as a definition. If it's a definition, it deserves a little rectangle around it, don't you think? Although, actually, I think this formula also really deserves a little rectangle around it. So there you go. Both very important, and um, yeah, so they're really closely connected and very important uh, for computations in both ways around. And uh, now let's apply it. Let's apply it in this case. I want this theta, and I now know that the cosine of this theta equals the uh, the dot pro the product inner product of these two vectors. So it's five minus six four, and then the inner product of minus 5, 5, 1, okay? And then divided by the length of these vectors. So it's the length of 5 minus 6, 4. Notice the little vertical bars there. Uh, times the length of minus 5, 5, 1. Okay, so far so good. So in the denominator here, I get 5 times minus 5, that's that times that one, here that's what we have to do. Then this times this one, so plus minus 6 times 5. And then the last one, plus 4 times 1. All right, and then we divide by the length of these things. Now I have a little space on my blackboard, so I'm going to try and do it in one go. So this is going to be the square root of 25 plus 36 plus 16, and I think that must be 77. And uh, this one is slightly easier. It's 5 squared plus 5 squared plus 1 squared is 51, because of course, if you square, you drop the minus. So this is the square root of 51. Okay, uh, so far, so very good. So let's see, uh, this is Let's see what comes out of this dot product. It's uh, minus 25, minus 30, plus 4. So that's uh, minus, um, minus uh, 51. Minus 51 divided by still the square roots of 77 and the square root of 51. Hey, 51 twice. But that's coincidence, really. And, uh, well, I have to admit, I prepared this a little bit, and I calculated in advance that the outcome is minus 0, 8, 81. So approximately, of course. Uh, so now I know that the cosine of theta equals approximately minus 0, 81. I can actually compute what theta is approximately. I'm actually quite happy that this number ended up between minus 1 and plus 1. This is a great check. I mean, then you can sort of avoid getting error for your uh, calculator because the cosine, of course, should always end up between minus 1 and 1. If it doesn't from this computation, then you know you have to do it again. 
And then actually, uh, if you take this inverse cosine, so, uh, or R cosine sometimes written, inverse cosine of minus 0, 0.8, 1, you'll find approximately 125.3 degrees. I'm sorry, this is a European comma, but you, you'll sure be happy with that. There you go. So this is super important formula, and it actually uses this inner product in an essential way. So I think I've done what I've promised you. I've shown you how to compute the distance between two points. I've showed you how to compute the angle between two vectors towards two points. And yeah, I mean, this is the heart of geometry. This is what you want to do as a geometer. You want to compute angles and distances. And I hope this video has helped you uh, along that way.